Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in the course Enzyme Science and Technology, we are discussing about the different properties of the enzymes and its contribution in the development of science as well as the technology. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, enzyme classifications and uh, enzyme nomenclature and in the previous module we have also discussed the history of the development of the field of enzymology. And in the current module we are discussing about the structure of the enzyme and in when we were discussing about the structure of enzyme we have discussed about the primary structures, we have also discussed about how to determine the primary structures and then subsequent to that we have also discussed about the secondary structure. We discuss about the tertiary structure, right? And uh, when we were discussing about the secondary structure, we discuss about the how to determine the secondary structure with the help of the CD spectroscopy and as well as the IR spectroscopy. And in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about the different methods to determine the tertiary structures. And in that context, we have discussed about the X-ray crystallography and as well as the NMR spectroscopy. So, in the today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the uh, computational methods to determine the protein structures. So, let us start today's lecture. So, what we are discussing in this particular module is we are discussing about the protein structures. So, as you can see that protein structure is made up of, of the or protein structure is being presented by the four stages or four um, uh, levels right. So, protein structure is being represented by the four uh, levels primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and some cases you may also have the quaternary structures. Primary structure is the amino acid sequence of the proteins, secondary structure is the alpha helix, beta sheets and the uh, turns and all these secondary structure when they come together and uh, they will fold further they are going to give rise to the tertiary structures. So, while we were discussing about the structure determination of the tertiary structures in the previous module, we have discussed about the different methods, different experimental methods. So, what are different experimental methods we have discussed? So, in the experimental method, we have discussed about the X-ray crystallography and as well as the NMR spectroscopy and both of these methods are actually going to give us the protein structures, the, the structure what you are going to get from the X-ray crystallography is going to be a static structure or uh, and whereas in the case of NMR spectroscopy it is going to give you a dynamic structure or solution structure. So, this is also called as the solution structures. Now, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the non-experimental method. So, when you have a protein for which you would like to determine the protein structure, you have the two options experimental procedures or the non-experimental procedure. So, in the, when we say non-experimental procedure that means we are actually going to talk about the computational approach uh, what you can actually be able to use to um, determine a protein structure. So, all these are actually being based on the uh, determining or uh, based on the uh, data sets right which actually is going to be used to train the particular software and that is how you are actually going to get the protein structures. So, what we are discussing about is the molecular modeling of the protein structures using the computational tools. So, when we talk about the molecular modeling, the molecular modeling can be of two types okay, depending on the uh, type of uh, protein sequence what you are using. Uh, it could be ab initio or uh, molecular modeling or it could be the template based homology modeling. Under what condition you will do the ab initio or the initio mo mo molecular modeling? So, when the protein is having no non-homologous sequences or protein is going to have the or not available for the non-homologous uh, protein structure. So, it, it does not have any homologous structure 
then you are no option but you are going to do the ab initio or molecular modeling. These uh, are the places where you are actually working with the new proteins or new protein fold and in that case uh, it does not have the any kind of uh, homology and that actually is going to be very difficult to solve the uh, get the protein structures. Uh, what are the things uh, basically people do when they do the ab initio molecular modeling is they are actually going to use the uh, the help of the uh, protein folding. So, they are actually going to predict how the protein folding is going to occur if this is the protein sequence. So, they will looking at the protein sequence and then uh, looking at the protein sequence they will actually going to predict what will be the protein folding which means what region of the protein is going to adopt what conformation and then they will actually going to cross verify by that with the help of the Ramchandran plot and all the other kinds of energy parameters because if you are actually going to get a good in a model it is actually going to show you the uh, low free energy right so so that in the molecule is going to be more and more stable but if there are steric hindrance if there are actually uh, clashes between the side chains that is actually going to be get you will get that information from the ramchandran plot and uh, that also is going to be reflected in terms of the energy parameters so both of these parameters can be used to determine whether the predicted protein fold can be correct or wrong and using this you can be able to go with the uh, uh, the uh, with the ab initio molecular modeling apart from this uh, they are also going to use the uh, dynamics so they are also going to uh, you know unfold the protein and then uh, again put it under the molecular dynamics uh, stimulations and that is how they are actually going to use. These are the three robust tools to uh, predict the protein folds and once they predict the protein fold eventually they are actually going to get the 3D structures. So, uh, in today's lecture uh, uh, we are not going to discuss about the ab initio uh, molecular modeling because that is not very popular because it requires the extensive computational tools. and uh, you can imagine that if you, if you have a protein of 100 amino acids, it is very difficult to uh, you know predict the protein folds especially when it is not having the homologous sequences and it is actually a new protein fold. So, in that case you might have to generate the protein folds using the Ramchandran plot and then you might have to determine what will be the free energy because ultimately uh, the free energy of the system has to be. Uh, lower down while you are it is going through the protein folding process. Uh, so, uh, then the second approach is the molecular modeling. So, molecular modeling uh, under what condition you will do the molecular modeling. So, when you are working with a protein sequence which has which has uh, homologous structures in the database that time you will use the homology modeling or uh, so homology modeling is a multi step process and uh, it is actually going to uh, use you have going to use the different process and you can be able to use the different types of softwares to do the molecular modeling. Then what we are uh, going to do is uh, we are going to first discuss about the how the molecular modeling is homology modeling is uh, you know theoretically working and then we are actually going to show you a small demo. So, what is the molecular modeling or homology modeling? So, this is a useful and fast structural solution method where the sequence similarity between the template and the target enzyme is used to model the three dimensional structure of the target enzyme. The homology modeling exploit the idea that the amino acid sequence of a protein directs the folding of the molecule to adopt a suitable three dimensional conformation within the minimum free energy. So, what is the basic idea of doing the homology modeling? Homology modeling means that you are actually going to have the template structure right. So, template structure is actually going to give you two information. One 
it is actually going to give you the information about the protein sequence which actually it is going to be right uh, which is from the protein sequence from the uh, template protein right and it is also going to give you the information about the protein folding right how a particular sequence is actually getting folds into that particular thing this means once you know the protein folding you are actually going to get the 3d coordinates of the of the template residues right so right so basically it is actually going to give you the xyz coordinates of the template residues how the alanine glycine arginine everything is present in this particular template structure right now if we have the target protein or if i have a target enzyme for which i am going to use i am going to determine the structure what i require is or what information i have is actually the protein sequence from the target enzyme now what i will do is i am going to take the 3d coordinates of the template residues okay or i will say the backbone because the residues are actually going to be same or different in some cases so since both of these the template structure and as well as target structures are homologous the many places the uh, the 3d coordinates of the template residues are actually going to be the same as it was present in the target enzyme but many places or few places the template residues are going to be different and because of that you are actually going to only take the 3d coordinates information of the template backbone which means you are also going you are only going to take the peptide bond information you are going to only the peptide bond or the main chain on side chain information you will not going to take because the side chain information may or may be same or may be different so this is what is exactly what you have to do but if you want to do this it is has to you have to follow the multiple steps so that you can be able to achieve this target so you cannot just simply take the 3d coordinates you have to first determine and identify the templates and that's why this is a homology modeling is a multi step process so what are the steps in the step 1 you are going to find the query sequence right so you are actually going to have you have to identify or uh, uh, isolate the query sequence so query sequence is nothing but the amino acid sequence of the test enzyme this you have to do from the ncbi uh, server right so you can actually uh, if you know the protein's name or if you know the accession number you can be able to get the query sequence from the ncbi server right then once you got the sequence then you are actually going to select the templates right because and that you are going to do with the help of t blast so what you are going to do is you are going to take this amino acid sequence and you are going to put it into the ncbi blast uh, which is a program actually and NCBI blast when you put it and you will select the database as the protein structure database right or the PDB so when you do the PDB database it is actually going to give you the uh, uh, templates so it is only going to tell you that okay these are the templates through which uh, your amino acid sequence is matching so these are the potential templates and then after that uh, you are actually going to test these templates in the step 3 so in the step 3 you are actually going to see the utility of the each template utility of each template right so that you are going to do by a pairwise alignment of the query with the template so you are going to do like template 1 uh, 
uh, you are going to do like template one versus your test sequence, right? So you are going to do a pairwise cluster W, and you are going to use the program which is called as cluster W. So when you do the class that, it will actually going to tell you wherever you have the gaps and how much is actually it is having the identity. If you have a very high number of gaps or if you have a very small identity, then it is actually not be suitable. So in that case, you will reject the template one. Uh, these are the things which can also be determined even by the some other kinds of scores. So uh, after once you select the template, then you are going to use that template into the software and it is actually going to allow you to build the model. So it is actually going to give you the 3D model and uh, it is actually going to do the exactly the same phenomena, right? It is going to take the amino acid sequence from the target enzyme and it is going to take the 3D coordinates from the your template structures and then it is actually going to put them together and that's how it is going to do the final refinements and it will give you the 3D homology model. So it is going to be called as homology model, right? Once you have prepared the model, then it has to be validated with the help of the validation programs like Ranchandran plot or uh, Verify 3D or the Arata plot, right? So all these are you're going to use and there are servers which are available to do this job, okay? So uh, I have given you a reference for this particular um, uh, steps. So you can actually be able to go through with this uh, reference and the title, uh, this article, and it is very good for determining or understanding the different steps. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed the theoretical aspects of how to determine or how to perform the homology modeling. Now what I'll do is I'll take you to my lab where a students have prepared a small demo clip and they will be going to show you the different steps. In this video, I will be talking about the steps involved in the homology modeling, modeling using modeler and parallelly I will be performing it on screen and explaining each step in detail. So in step one, we need to find out our query sequence which we need to model so that query sequence either we have the we can we have the sequence from the literature or we can download a, our query sequence from ncbi website given here and then in the downloaded file we need to make some changes to make it compatible uh, for working with modeler so i will show you how to download and what changes we need to make so we will open up the ncbi website and the ncbi website on the ncbi website we will go to protein database we will select protein here and after that i will type the name of the sequence which we want to model so here it is a list of uh, related sequences so for example we need to model this first sequence hsp8 protein partial having 219 amino acids so we will click on this and after clicking on this it will open up the details of this protein then we will click on FASTA and this will open up the amino acid sequence of the protein now we can just to copy this sequence here and now we will go to our desktop here we can create a new text document file and this in this text document file we will paste our faster sequence so faster sequence has certain format so but this format is not compatible with modular so we need to make some changes so what changes we need to make uh, we can find it in the tutorial for modular so for this demo we are using using modular 10.3 so i will open tutorial for modular 10.3 so i will go to this website and here we can see here it is tutorial i will click on the tutorial and then this basic modeling so uh, before uh, making the changes i would 
we need to download this zip format files uh, so that uh, because it contains some in files which are required to create other input files using modeler so i have already downloaded this so i will just go to downloads and in downloads uh, this is the this is the folder which i have downloaded and extracted here so from this folder we need to copy this pdb underscore 95 dot pr file and we need to paste this file in c drive where our modeler is installed so i will open c drive and then go to program files and then modeler 10.3 then bin and here i will create new folder and i will name it modeling and then i will paste that file here now we will use we will be using this folder for our further files and for further operations so i will minimize this and now here we can see this is the format for the query sequence in for modeler in this the starting the header code this one is different from what we see in, in our fasta sequence so we need to copy this uh, this uh, this code and we need to paste it in in place of the header code of this fasta sequence so i have pasted it and now we will we see we can see that at the end of the sequence there is a star so that star is also required for fasta query sequence so i will put a star here and now in this sequence in the tutorial we can see th they are using tvldh for for the tutorial they are using tvldh but our sequence is different so we have to we can change, give certain name to our sequence in place of tvldh so i will open the faster uh, the downloaded sequence and here in place of tvldh I, we can give just we will replace all the tvldh wherever it is written tvldh with query and then we'll replace all so we can see the tvldh it is replaced with query now our query sequence file is ready now we will mm, go to file and save it save it as query dot ali that dot ali extension is very important so we need to save it as query dot ali and we will remove the text extension dot dot txt extension and first we will save this on desktop because if we directly save it in the folder we created it will ask for administrative privileges so i will save it on desktop first it's save on saved on desktop i will close it i will go to desktop and here is the query dot ali file now i will delete this previous new text document file and this one i will query dot li i will cut and i will paste it in the folder which we have created in the bin folder earlier so i will paste it here now it is pasted now we will go to again go to the tutorial and in the tutorial now we need to run a script which will create certain input files for the modeler so this is the script this complete is the script again we will do the same thing we will copy this script and then we will go to desktop we will open new text document and we will paste our script here and now in this script also we need to make certain changes in we can see in the script they, they have used tv ldh here so just we will tv ldh dot ali but our file is query dot ali so we will replace this uh, we will replace this tv ldh with query so we will replace all so that wherever it is tv ldh it will be replaced with query so no other changes are required so we will just go to file and save as 
now we will save this on desktop and we'll we can give any name like script one but we need to give the file extension as dot py script one dot py that py extension is very important for to we make to make it readable to modeler now we'll save it i will close it and we can see on the desktop this file script dot one dot py is created i will delete this folder file and then i will cut this file and now i will paste this in the folder modeling folder which we created so now now we can see it is pasted here now we need to run this script to create other input files for modeler so for running the script we need to go to modeler so i will open modeler and one thing is very important we need to run modeler as administrator so that we do not get any error and so i will run it as administrator so this is the modeler command line now we will the folder active folder is modeler 10.3 we will move to our folder which we created to so cd uh, cd space bin backslash uh, modeling this is the folder we created now we have opened that folder here in modeler command line and now we can type dir to see the files present in this folder so we can see pdb underscore 95 which we downloaded from the tutorial and this is query dot ali which we created the script one dot py which we created so we need to run this script so the we will type the command to run this script that is mod 10.3 10.3 is the version of modeler we are using space script one dot py now we will press enter and the command will run and after the command is run we will see certain files are automatically created in the fold in the modeling folder so we can see now this uh, th these three files has have already are created like script one dot log build profile dot li build profile dot prf and build pdb underscore 95 dot bin these are the new files created which will be used by modeler later so now uh, our first step is done so we will move to the next step which is the selecting the template so in selecting the template first we need to run a protein blast in ncbi itself for our query sequence and then uh, we will get certain uh, certain sequences which have uh, which have matching sequence identity so we will select the top 3 to 4 template from those based on their score and then we will download the pdb structure of those templates and we will save those in the same folder which we created and then we will run the script for selecting the best template so i will show it now so we will go to the ncbi site again and here we can see our sequence which we are modeling is already there so i will click here on run blast so after running blast it will a page will open where it will ask for certain parameters so here we will select the database as protein data bank proteins because we need the pdb files of the templates so i will click here blast now and now it will take 2 3 seconds to give the results and here now uh, okay we can see here that the the top 3 to 4 sequences have like query cover is more than 84% their percent identity is above 80 percent so these these are significant values so we will select this top four structures so now we need to download these four structures so we will go to uh, the pdb website that is rcsb.org.org and then so it is 
rcsb.org I will open and then we will type the PDB ID uh, this 4PO2 here so here I will type 4PO2 and I will select this so it will open the page for now we can go to this download files and here we can click on PDB format so then we will get the PDB format of this file so now we will copy and paste this this file to our folder so before copying and pa before pasting it there we can just write some other name suppose temp1 template1 one, so for our convenience and now we we can just cut it and paste it in the folder we created in modular 10.3 so I will paste this here similarly we will download other files and change their name names and uh, paste in the in this folder so I so I have already downloaded the other two more sequences and I have pasted them in the modeling change their name and pasted them in the modeling folder these are temp1 already we sh I showed you how to download this then temp2 and temp3 temp I have downloaded and pasted it here now after this we need to go to the tutorial again and from here uh, we'll go to this topic 2 selecting a template and this is the script for selecting the template so I will copy this script and again I will paste it on desktop so in a new text document file so I pasted it here and in this we will make changes accordingly here we can see they have given the name of the sequences which they have used in the tutorial so this we will replace with our template sequences which with the names which we have given so this I will replace with temp1 one BDM I will replace with temp2 one CIV I will replace with temp3 and 5 MDH I will replace with temp4 now they have used more than uh, we are using three sequences only so this temp4 is not required so the rest of the sequences which they have used in the tutorial we can delete it so we need to delete this okay now this is done so there are no more changes required so I will save this file in py format so I will save it on desktop I will write it at this script 2.py and save it on desktop first now we can go to the desktop and uh, that script 2.py file is here we can delete this text document file first and then we will cut this script file and paste it in the modeling folder now the script uh, is here so we can now we need to run this script we will go to modular command line and here um, okay so now I uh, will type the command for running the script mod 10.3 space script 2 dot py so now script 2 has run so we will go to the to our modeling folder and here we can see few more files are generated so this script 2 dot log and this this family file this this has been created by modeler uh, so now we need to go to the tutorial again and now we will move to uh, before that uh, we should um, go to the modeling folder and we can open this script 2 dot log file uh, we can open it with notepad and at the end of this file 
we can see a comparison between the three templates which we used so here the template one is the best template in this 2.0 it shows its crystallographic res structure resolution so we will select this template one from this three sequences for further operations so now we can close this script file and now we will go to the next step that is aligning our sequence with the template so this is the script for alignment of our query sequence with our template sequence so the now i'll copy this script again we will paste it in a te new text document file and we will make required changes so here we can see here it is one bdm which the they have used in tutorial the sequence which they have used in tutorial so this one bdm this we will replace with our template sequence that is temp1 so i will replace all and then uh, here we can see they have it is written as tvldh so tvldh we will replace with our query sequence so i will replace tvldh with query so we have made the required changes now i will fail i will save this script file as in .py format so i will save it as script 3.py now we can see on the desktop on the script 3.py file is created so i will just delete the text document file cut this script file and paste it in the modeling folder now script 3.py is pasted here so again we will go to modeler to run the script 3 so here we can type same command mod 10.3 space script 3 dot py so now the script 3 is is has also run so it will create some new files here we can see these top two files dot pap file and dot ali file has been created after running the script 3 so now we will move to our, our final step again we will go to the tutorial so in tutorial the final step is model building so this is the script for the building the model based on the selected template so i will copy this script again and paste it on desktop in a new text document file and here again we need to do some changes so uh, here we will replace tvldh with query it's already written here so and and this one bdm i will replace with temp1 so i'll type temp1 and then replace all so we can see that it is replaced tvldh is replaced with temp1 now again we will save this script in .py format on desktop so this is script 4.py now we can close this and we can see on desktop script 4.py file is created so I will cut this file here and paste it in the modeler modeling folder. Now the script 4 is dot py is present here. So we will go to modeler command line again and we will type mod 10.3 space script 4 dot py. So this script will uh, create the model. So while this script is running we can see in our folder some new files are being created so 
these are the new files being created and and the models for our query structure based on the template are also get, getting written here so this is the first model query b triple nine triple zero one is the first model and this is the second model it will create few more models and then we will analyze these models so it will take around 5 10 seconds to create all the models and in this we can also see a script 4 dot log file this is script 4 dot log file this we will use to see the dop score which is assigned to the model by modeler and based on the dop dop score we will select the best model and then we will evaluate it using uh, certain online servers and tools so we will go to modeler command line and here we can see that that the script 4 has run successfully so now we will go to the modeling folder again and then here we will open script 4.log file in notepad so here we can see in at the last of this file all the models are given and they are mol pdf and dop score and ga341 score is given so based on the dop score the model with having the lowest uh, dop score or the most negative dop score we will select so we can see this model 4 this is having the lowest dop score so we can now evaluate this model using online servers so we will go to uh, we can use saves server which is created by NIH and so I will open this server here uh, so here we can choose the model which we want to uh, evaluate so I will choose we have seen in the uh, script 4.log file that is uh, model 4 has the maximum uh, sorry most low lowest dop score so we will select model 4 and open it here now it is selected here and now we will run programs so here we can evaluate our model it will it is a combination of several evaluation checks so we will evaluate for error we will evaluate for verify 3d and we will uh, evaluate for pro check so we will start with error so now it will take few seconds so overall quality factor for this model is 84.9462 which is a which is a very good and very significant now we will verify that th very with verified 3d so it, it determines the compatibility of the atomic model with its own sequence so we'll start this verify 3d check and here we, we have to wait for Five, six seconds and it will give the results so and after that we will uh, go for pro check evaluation that pro check evaluation does the stereo it checks the stereo chemical quality of the protein structure by analyzing the geometry residue by residue so this verify 3d is taking little more time we have to wait uh, see see the results of verify 3d has come now so it is showing that 99.54 percent of the residues have averaged 3d 1d score that is greater than or equal to point so if 80 percent of the residues shows the score greater than 0.2 that models is passed so we can see our model is passed here now we can go to pro check and start the pro check evaluation so in it will this pro check will uh, perform few and uh, i think uh, six uh, evaluation six or eight evaluation and out of this it will show how much are passed and so here we can see it is showing out of eight evaluation there are errors in two and six are passed and there is no warning so this is a good result for the model so we can see the evaluation our model 
based on this evaluation we can say that our model in the, our query sequence has been modeled uh, correctly so now we we can do some more evaluations with other tool that is VADAR so this VADAR tool uh, we can generate our Ramachandran plot here so I will choose the our model 4 again here and then I will click submit so it will uh, it will generate the Ramachandran plot and other statistics for our model here we can see uh, these are the uh, plots it has created and these four are the output files it has created from here we can click on Ramachandran plot and it will give the Ramachandran plot for our model so we can see that most of the this Ramachandran plot says so the most of the residues, residues are in allowed regions uh, and then again we can go to the output of the VADAR 1.8 results and then here we can click on statistics so this statistics will show the percentage of alpha helix a percentage of beta sheets and the coiled structure in our protein so alpha helix is 40 percent beta sheets 21 percent and coiled is 38 percent so and other statistics of our protein model structure we can find out here so based on this evaluation we can say that our model is uh, significant and correct now we can visualize our model in many visualization software like uh, I will open this uh, PyMall or Discovery Studio. So I will open PyMall now and we will visualize our uh, model in the PyMall. So So, see in the PyMole is opening, okay. So in PyMole, we can just go to file, open and we can select our model from that fold, from the modeling folder. So, this is the model 4, I will open here. So here we can see this is the model structure for our query sequence and we can check its alignment with the template sequence. So uh, we know that our we can go to the NCBI and we know we know that, that it is model based on the template 1 which is 4PO2. So we can just in in PyMol we can open this 4PO2 and download it will download the structure of 4PO2 in PyMol so here we can see it has downloaded the structure so we can see here that our structure is nicely aligned with with uh, up, uh, with a segment of the template sequence and the rest of the sequence in the template uh, doesn't have identity with our protein or with our query sequence our query sequence was 219 amino acids only so we can see the those amino acids are aligned nicely with the amino acids of our template sequence so, so this is all with modeler we have we have performed all the steps like uh, preparing the query sequence then selecting the template then building the model and the model evaluation so this is all with uh, this is all with basic modeling and there are certain other things like advanced modeling which will 
but in this demo I will, I will be showing only basic modeling so that's all with the video thank you so uh, I hope you have enjoyed the demo clip and in the demo clip uh, my student uh, has uh, shown you the different steps how you can be able to find the query sequence how you can be able to use that query sequence to determine or select the templates what are the different parameters you should use uh, and while he was showing you the demo he has used the program which is called as modeler uh, 10th version right and uh, then he has shown you how to do alignment of query with the template so that you can be able to screen out which template you should use and which template you should avoid and then he has shown you the molecular modeling of building the you know 3d, 3D models and then ultimately the validation of the program with the service servers so now you got the 3d models at right so uh, what we have discussed so far is uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, tertiary structures how to determine the protein uh, tertiary structure of the proteins and uh, we have discussed about the computational method and we have also discussed about the experimental wet lab experiments so in the wet lab experiment we discuss about the x-ray crystallography and the nmr spectroscopy whereas in the case of the uh, non-experimental uh, computational method we have discussed about the homology modeling now once we are done with the tertiary structures you can also have the quaternary structures so if the multiple polypeptides are involved in the constitution of the protein the tertiary structure of these different polypeptide chain come together to form the quaternary structure now the question comes under what conditions you can have the quaternary structures so and how you will know that the protein has the quaternary structures so uh, if so the question so answer in the, of this question is if the multiple polypeptides are involved in the constitution of the protein the tertiary structure of the different polypeptide chains are going to come together and that's how it is actually going to give you the quaternary structure classical example is hemoglobin where you're going to have the two alpha chain and two beta chains right so it is actually a hetero uh, tetramer right so where you have the two alpha chains and two beta chain so you, it has a four chain and that's how it is actually going to give you a quaternary structure but the question is how experimentally when i give you a protein sequence or when i give you a protein how you can be able to determine whether it also has the quaternary structure or not so there is a simple experiment what you can actually do to uh, to determine whether the quaternary structure is present in this particular protein or not what you are going to do is uh, methods to determine the quaternary structure is you what you are going to do is you are going to determine the oligomeric status and this methods anyway we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to discuss about the gel filtration chromatography and as well as the uh, electron uh, electrophoresis right so what you are going to do is you are going to take the protein and resolve that protein onto a gel filtration uh, column in conjugation with the SDS page and what will happen is that when you do that it is actually going to give you the two molecular weight it is going to give you a native molecular weight uh, which you are going to get from the gel filtration column and it is also going to give you the um, denatured uh, molecular weight which you are going to get from the SDS page. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to determine the oligomeric status, right? And when you do the oligomeric status, what you can do is you can determine the uh, NM, right? So, native molecular weight, you can actually be able to divide by the denatured molecular weight. So, if this number so you will get a number right so if this number is 1 it is actually going to have so if this number is going to be uh, 1 right you will not going to have so it, no uh, quaternary structure right because it only has one polypeptide chain if this number is actually going to be 2 or more right 
then it is actually going to have the quaternary structure because it is going to have the multiple polypeptides. So, if if so, I think you will you will you will not be you will you will uh, you you would be more curious uh, query, uh, curious that how we have actually. Uh, so I am I'm sure um, you will not be able to understand it very clearly because so far we have not discussed about the gel filtration chromatography, even the SGS page electrophoresis. But uh, the idea is that you should determine the oligomeric status, and then uh, it is actually going to give you the. Uh, uh, it is going to give you the idea whether the quaternary structure is present or not. If the oligomeric status is 1, then it is actually going to be a monomer, right? And if it is uh, quaternary structure is 2 or more, then it is actually going to be oligomer. And oligomers are going to show you the quaternary structure. Now, irrespective of whether we use the molecular modeling, which means whether you use the homology modeling or whether you use the X-ray crystallography, you are going to or you are going to use the NMR spectroscopy, you are going to get a 3D structure of a protein. So, this is the typical 3D structure of a protein where you will see that these are the helix these are the beta sheets and they are arranged together and what you see is these are the unstructured loops. So, these are the loops, these are the uh, beta sheets and these are the helix, right. Now, when you have a protein structure, it actually requires a very extensive study with the help of the different types of softwares, what you can use to determine many properties of this enzyme or many properties of this particular structure, right? So, uh, we have prepared a very small demo clip to, to show you what are the different properties you can actually be able to study from the protein structures and uh, how you can be able to exploit that information for developing the substrate or the inhibitors and how you can use that for studying the different types of interactions. So, uh, this demo clip is actually going to be very useful for learning the uh, how to analyze the protein structures. Hello everyone. So, in this uh, particular demo, we are going to see how you can be able to analyze the protein structure. And uh, so, for demo purposes, uh, we have used a software which is called as uh, Pymol. And Pymol uh, educational version can be easily be downloaded from the PyMOLS website. And then what you have to do is first uh, we are you are going to uh, load the molecule. So, for loading the molecule you just first click the file open and then you go to the respective uh, uh, directory. So, uh, we will go to so, I will load the molecule. So, I am loading a molecule which is called as uh, uh, protein PFD0975W. It is a malarial protein. So, once you load the protein, it is going to show you like this and uh, what you are going to do is, uh, so what you see in this protein is that there is a ligand what is actually been present, right? And now, uh, first uh, objective would be that we would like to do the active site analysis, okay. So, for doing the active site analysis, what I will do is, what I will do is, I will I'll make it a uh, little beautiful. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to convert this into a cartoon model. That is, that is the model what you are going, what you normally see. And then we are going to see the primary structures, we are going to see the secondary structures, we are going to see the tertiary structures and then ultimately we are, um, I am also going to show you how you can be able to do the uh, analysis for the active site. So, for uh, making a cartoon model of this uh, particular uh, protein structure, what you are going to do is, uh, you click the uh, hide, so you hide first the protein and then you are going to put the cartoon. Okay. So, the moment you do that, it is actually going to give you the cartoon. Now, if you are interested and you want to make it uh, like secondary structures or you want to make uh, little coloring to this structure so that you, it is easy for you to identify, 
what you can do is you go to this uh, color tab right and then you can be able to color everything by secondary structure elements or you can do the molecule color by its uh, 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 choice uh, the color of your choice right so what i am doing is i am putting the uh, bisect, uh, by secondary structure so i am choosing this right so where the helix is going to be colored as cyan sheet is going to be colored as uh, pink and the uh, loop is going to be colored as orange okay so now this is what you are going to see okay now uh, if i want to study the primary structure so if you recall uh, primary structure means uh, the amino acid sequence so if you want to see the amino acid sequence of this particular protein what you can do is you are going to click this uh, s you see there there are so many buttons here so if you click the s there will be a window which is going to be pop up on the top and that uh, window is actually going to uh, give you the idea about the amino acid sequence okay and it actually is a very handy tool because it is actually going to help you to design, to uh, select a, a portion of the protein which you are interested to zoom or something okay so in this uh, if you see the second primary structure what you see is that different uh, region is colored with a different color so for example the uh, the beta sheets are colored in a pink right so these are the this is the beta sheet residues okay so these are the residues which are responsible for making the beta sheets so this is see all these beta sheets are being selected and uh, similarly uh, for helix for example this is the uh, amino acids which are making the helix so this is the helix what they are making actually right and uh, so on uh, in some cases uh, you might have to select for example if you want to use this protein for or if you want to use this enzyme for designing the drugs right so in that cases you might have to study some region of the protein and then you have to select so in that is also very handy right if you just like select for example i have selected um, the uh, amino acids from uh, 150 right to 200 for example so i will select up to 200 right and then what I'll do is I'll I want to color that region in a separate uh, color. Okay, so I have selected it, right? So this two button, right? One is for protein, the other one is select. So in the select, I will go and I'll say, okay, this is the color uh, uh, I want to choose. So I'll choose like magenta, or I will choose like some other color which is not there. Okay, so I will use yellow. So this is the portion. You see, this portion is got. Uh, labeled as uh, yellow color so that actually is going to help you to identify okay this is the portion which is responsible for catalyzing the reactions or interacting with the substrate and so on now as far as the so this is about all about the primary structures uh, if you scroll this at the end it will actually going to show you so this is actually is showing the pdb so it's also going to show you that uh, there are manganese two molecules of manganese which are present in the protein structure and then it is having the uh, protein bound phosphate and it also has the ATP at the end okay so it also has the protein bound ATP because this protein is a is a kinase so it is actually going to have the uh, active side bound uh, ATP as well now once we have gone through with the primary structure we can just click this and then it is actually going to uh, disappear the tab and then you can also study the secondary structures so uh, so example this is the helix right so what you see right yeah, uh, beautiful cyan colored helix and, uh, and then uh, these uh, you also have the beta sheets so pink color beta sheets what you see and you see all the two strands are uh, so this is actually a uh, anti parallel uh, beta sheets so one sheet is going in this direction the other one is going in this direction so this is a anti parallel beta sheets Whereas uh, what you see, uh, this is also an anti-parallel beta sheets. One sheet is going in this direction, the other sheet is going in this direction. Whereas uh, if you see very carefully, uh, the this sheet, this sheet, or this sheet, and this sheet is actually in a uh, parallel mode. Okay, so they are they are arranged in a parallel mode. For example, these also are anti-parallel beta sheets. And what you see, right, all these uh, secondary structures, right, the alpha helix or beta sheets are connected by the loop structure. And you see how the loops are unstructured, right. And because this is a modeled uh, structure, what you see is, uh, is basically having the lot of unstructured region because this is the structure, this is the region where 
the protein does not have the any kind of homology in the existing structure. So if I want to improve this, uh, I probably could have to do ab initio uh, molecular modeling. Uh, so this is all about this. Okay. Now if I want to do the active site analysis, uh, what I'll do is I'll put first put the uh, substrate, right? So I will put the molecule, and uh, so I will put the ligand, and I'll show that as uh, sticks, right? So this is I have selected. Now you can see right this is the ATP which is uh, protein bound ATP. So this is the adenine ring, uh, this is the sugar and this is the phosphate. If I want I can uh, actually be able to color this as per the uh, elements. So I can color it as per the element. So in that case uh, it is actually going to show me the phosphate uh, and the you know so wherever it has the negative charge it is actually going to show me the red color and wherever it has the uh, polar groups or positively charged it is actually going to give me the uh, uh, yellow uh, blue color actually. Now if I want to study more about this, so there are many ways in which I can be able to study the active site. For example, if I want to know what are the residues which are interacting with ATP. So what I will do is I will select the ATP. So you have to do nothing, you have to just click this molecule, either you click here or you click in this tab. And then I, what I'll do is I'll select and I'll do route. I will do a right click. When I do a right click, I will say uh, I want to uh, see uh, what are the different uh, molecules are interacting with this molecule. So what I'll do is I'll uh, go to the action and then I'll say I want to see what are the atoms are present within the 4x term or 5x term. So when I do that, uh, it is actually going to select all the atoms of the proteins which are going to be present in the 5 angstrom radius. Because ideally what happens is that when you are actually looking for the uh, posi positible, uh, possible interactors, uh, you always have to uh, you know select like that. And then what I will do is I will go to the label okay, and then I will say I will label the residues. So what you see here is it has labeled all the residues which are within the 5 angstrom of this particular molecule and that is how it is going to give you that okay these are the molecules which are probably be interacting. Now ultimately what you can do is you can do a distance matrix and you can actually be able to open this mole uh, molecule in other softwares to measure the distances. Uh, apart from this uh, you can also be able to check the uh, you can also be able to uh, check the uh, uh, you can also be able to make the cavities okay so uh, you can also study how the grooves are present in this particular protein so for that what you can do is uh, you can just uh, go to here and you say i want to see the surface okay so what you are going to do if you want to see the charge distribution on the protein structure is you are going to see this you are going to go to this action button Okay, so click the action button and then you say I want to generate the electrostatic charge distribution under the vacuum. Okay, and then you select this vacuum and then you are going to select this. So it is actually going to calculate and very soon it is actually going to show you the color. So this is the you know charge distribution what you see and uh, wherever you have you see the red color that is the actually the negative size and wherever you see the blue it is actually going to be uh, uh, positive side okay now if i show you again the uh, molecule right so if i show you the molecule uh, again right so so this is the atp sitting here right and uh, if i show you that atp again uh, you will see that how nicely the ATP is being placed and uh, okay. So this is uh, what you see right. So ATP is placed and wherever you have the uh, blue actually that is the positive and wherever you have the red that is the negative and wherever you see this white that is at either the neutral or the hydrophobic regions of the proteins. Now this is all about what you can actually be able to uh, analyze uh, on the protein structure. One more thing which you can also do is uh, you can actually be able to uh, uh, you know superimpose the two structures. Okay, So how to do that? 
what first thing what you have to do is uh, you have to load the molecules so for example i have loaded two molecules like one zao and uh, this molecule right so if i load the one zao and this molecule uh, i am going to see the two structures right uh, one zao and this one right so this is the other one right and uh, so uh, what I can do is I can just do the uh, alignment. So I can do is uh, I will click the action button, then I do the alignment and then I say to molecule and then you select. Okay, the moment you do that, okay, it is actually going to align onto the other molecule. Uh, to make it very simple, uh, let me just remove all these molecules so that uh, uh, you know so that it will be uh, easy actually huh? so so if i open zo one zo and uh, protein right you're going to see that okay these are the two protein structures right so one is the one zo the other one is the pfd 0975w and if i want to superimpose this to this what i'll do is i'll go here i'll go to the align i'll go to the two molecule and then I will select the other one okay and it is actually going to show me the alignment okay uh, and what is the advantage of making an alignment and the advantage of making an alignment is that it is actually going to show you the contrasting features. Uh, so this is all about the, uh, the demo on which uh, so that you can be able to do the different types of analysis onto the protein structure. Thank you. So I hope you might have liked the demo clip and you will understand and understand the potential of the protein structures and how the protein structure is actually very very complicated and it requires a very detailed study to understand the function of each and every portion of the proteins. So in that demo clip we have shown you how to determine the charges uh, discharge distribution on the protein uh, how you can be able to uh, you know explore the different cavities what are present in the protein structures and so on so what we have discussed uh, in this particular lecture we have discussed about the primary structures we have discussed about the secondary structures we have discussed about the tertiary structures and we have also discussed about the quaternary structure while we were discussing about the uh, primary structures we have discussed about how you can be able to determine the primary structures and uh, what are the different types of amino acids are present amino acids are actually having a general structures where you have the amino groups carboxyl groups attached to a central carbon which is called as c alpha and then it is attached to the different types of r groups and depending on the r groups you can be having the amino acids of different types whether it is the polar amino acids, non-polar amino acids, hydrophobic amino acids, um, charged amino acids like the negatively charged amino acids, positively charged amino acids and so on. And then we have also discussed about how you can be able to determine the primary structures with the help of the different types of protein sequencing methods. Now once you have determined the primary structures, you can actually be able to understand the secondary structures so because th these primary structures are only going to direct how the protein is actually going to fold and that's how it is actually going to give you the secondary structure. So within the secondary structure, we have discussed about the alpha helices, beta sheets and we have also discussed about the loops, right? Uh, I already suggested you when we were discussing about the secondary structure that you should actually go through with some of the standard biochemistry books like the Leninger, White and White or Stryer. So this is all about the different uh, details of the protein structures and how you can be able to use the different techniques to determine the protein structures. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.